What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another film review, or more like a classic film review. So, I was browsing around stuff to watch, and I got around to looking at what was on HBO Max, and as it turns out, the Akira Kurosawa film Rashomon is streaming. It's a 1950 film that tells the story of the death of a samurai, but from four different perspectives. So notably, a bandit, the samurai, the samurai's wife, and an outside party, a carpenter guy. So essentially, the film is a classic because it uses a number of techniques for the time that were unique. Uh, notably, or one of the side ones is, that, for example, the use of sunlight. Um, so rather than pointing a camera directly in the sun or not having enough sunlight in areas, they would use reflective mirrors to enhance the light in areas so that the light would be more even. Um, they also had a few scenes of um, following the action. So as characters were running, they would have a cameraman behind them as if you were running with them. So simple techniques like that make the film stand out for a 1950s film. But beyond that, the film creates what's called the Rashomon effect in that you have a story of the death of a samurai, that's the un uncontested part of the film, but you have different points of view um, of what happened, whether it's the um, samurai getting k killed by the uh, bandit, the um, wife's point of view for what the bandit did to her and to the samurai, the carpenter's third part, part third party point of view of what happened and them individually telling their stories one after another so by the end of the film you're undecided as to who is correct in their story but everyone is consistent in the fact that the samurai was killed so overall the film was very well done for an hour and a half long movie it went by really fast you don't really see the time go by is you would I would have thought going into it that it would have felt slow the black and white would have thrown me off but overall the movie was very well done the pacing was even and you can see how Kurosawa earns his um, reputation as a director for this film and films and a film like um, I want to say the magnificent original magnificent seven possibly and films like that um, so overall if you um do watch the film i would definitely or i do recommend watching the film because it has that effect to give you um uh, or leave you with questions as far as what happened with um in the story who's right who's wrong um and what um actually happened as a story so that's really all there is for um that so the other reason why this film stands out um is because of its connection like a lot of classic films to star wars so um the initial basic version of that is um in the empire strikes back when um when ben is telling luke about vader and you and he tells him about how vader became uh, or Anakin became Vader from a certain point of view. So um, that was essentially an early look and question for Luke that the our worldview of reality is often shaped by our own point of view. So that dies directly to the bandit, the samurai, samurai's wife, and the carpenter that your point of view is determined by how you're looking at the world. So sometimes you have to step outside and look at it from different points of view. And this gets further um, explored in The Last Jedi when we're um, looking at the relationship between Luke and um, Ben Solo in that um, we have them telling two sides of the story and that it's less about an unreliable narrator and more for a, our point of view and that we're only seeing what we want to see. Um, and that... Luke tells his story in bits and pieces and um, Ben Solo fills in the rest but by the end of it that kind of forces Luke to tell the whole story but then it goes still calls into question as to uh, what happened and where and um, how much evil did Luke actually sense in Ben and all of that so overall it's a very interesting look as far as how that principle of the Rashomon effect gets portrayed in 
films like are in different sorts of films so when you or if you ever rewatch any of the films or you're um, looking at rewatching any of the Star Wars films to consider the whole Rashomon effect as a certain point of view and for me something that I'm still trying to work my theory around is um, how um, the Emperor fits into that as far as the prequels go because he's less the unreliable narrator and more of the Rashomon effect in, in that he's telling two different sides of the same story but rather than having two individual people you have two separate personalities where he's or acting as um, as Chancellor Palpatine and also Darth Sidious so you're treating, looking at them individually you kind of see that same of same thing going into effect because he is more rather than an individual basis you're looking at it as a galactic experience in a more overarching um, story so rather than just having um, two people or a small set of people you have the galaxy at large uh, multiple races multiple planets multiple um, or many many points of view so you not only do you have the chancellor but you have the senate you have the separatists you have the jedi you have um, the individual Sith like um, Count Dooku, Asai Ventress, um, you have General Grievous, the Separatist Council. So everybody has their different points of view and rather than just having a, f a few people you have all these different factors going into place so um, that's or thinking about Star Wars or the Star Wars franchise in that as aspect um, makes you or forces you to realize what or how much influence the Chancellor had, and then how um, the Jedi on their on the whole were a flawed society. So even in Luke telling um, Ray about how the Jedi were idolized and worshipped is a point of view. He's t he's telling showing how um, the Jedi were flawed and that um, having the popular or having the galactic point of view and creating the Jedi as um, heroes and um, idols to be worshipped and legends is a point of view but looking at it from a different point of view notably Luke's is that the Jedi were fallible they were it was less about them having this power but them just being human and still falling to their base or baser instincts so overall thinking now that I've seen this film it gives me a different sort of appreciation in the nine films to um, see how those different points of view clash and collaborate and mesh together and in general just uh, work to create that sense of um, variation and points of view that we're looking at the same or we're looking at one timeline in or from multiple points of view so that's really all there is for this particular review um, I definitely recommend giving Rashomon a watch um, and I'm actually going to go and rewatch the nine films in episode order, just to and but look at it in the eye of the points of different points of view to um, see how it holds up um, from that aspect, um, especially with the latter trilogy. So, granted, we have the Last Jedi with that, but to see how it all plays into or how it all falls into place with. Um, the Force Awakens when we have um, everyone looking for Luke as the last Jedi and then in um, The Rise of Skywalker as far as um, looking at the return of the Emperor and um, how Ben and Rey defeat him especially since Rey goes into it with the knowledge of um, Luke's theory of the Jedi being legends and um what the Emperor was doing to Ben to make him the way he was. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And um, that's really that's all for this particular episode. So thanks for tuning in, and until next time.